This is the first of two slideshows dedicated to redox titrations. Redox titrations are important part of titration analysis. Almost one third of all titrations in pharmaceutical industry are done with redox methods. Let's consider uh, the simplest titration curve. Consider titration of Fe2 plus ions, iron 2, with standard cerium 4 plus. We'll monitor it potentiometrically with platinum electrode and uh, some reference. Oh, it can be columnal, can be AGCL, electrode. Titration reaction is very simple. C4 plus plus Fv2 plus makes C3 plus and Fe3 plus. One electron jumps from iron onto cerium. One mole of cerium-4 oxidizes one mole of Fe2 rapidly and quantitatively. There are two Nernst equations that are relevant to this story. First is Nernst equation concerning iron-3 plus and iron-2 plus ions. E 0 0.77 plus 0 0.06 log ratio of these two ions. Now we have seen this Nernst equation before. Very similar Nernst equation, just with different E0, describes cerium 4 to cerium 3 ratio. Now, what will be the equivalence point potential, theoretical potential of end point can be calculated by very simple formula. Potential of equivalence point is average between oxidizing and reducing agent redox potential. So 1.5 plus 0 C 7, 7 divided by 2. Uh, that's true only when number of electrons in each half reaction are identical. In this case, they are one electron here and one electron there. Okay, let's consider more details on the next slide. At the beginning of titration, we have only a fifth 3 plus and Fe2 plus ions, because all cerium 4 will convert and cerium 3 plus, and you'll see very little cerium 4 left in solution. So redox potential will be determined by Fe3 plus, Fe2 plus pair. When we titrate one half of our iron 2 concentrations of Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus will be equal, which means log will be 0 and potential will be 0 0.77 minus potential of your reference electron. That's here. Potential of reference electron is around uh, 0.2, so it's 0.55 or something like that. Now, <coughs> potential increases when we add more oxidation agents, and at some point we'll have most of iron titrated. So, say 1000 times more iron 3 plus than Fe2 plus, we cannot see the error anymore. 
and the redox potential of this will be 0.95. That's where we can stop the iteration having no error. Or we can proceed to equivalence point, which is 108 volts minus your redox potential of reference electrode. Or we can proceed even further uh, when we still have a very little excess of cerium. So if we'll stop at 132, at 108, or at 095, we'll still have very small error, undetectable error of the iteration. Beyond that point, the second Nernst equation takes care and uh, redox potential will rise to 1.5, again minus SC, so 1.3 something. Anyway, any potential in this range is satisfactory. We can stop at any point. It's very easy, very sharp titration, and widely used in analytical chemistry. Another titration with strong oxidation agent is the oxidation with potassium permanganate. Potassium permanganate is bright purple solution, reasonably well soluble in water, and when it comes into colorless solution of reducing agent, color of permanganate disappears due to reaction. MnO4 minus 8H plus, you need to run your reaction in one molar acid, five electrons, not one making Mn2+, plus, which is practically colorless, and water. Now, the second reaction can be the same as in previous example. So, one electron for iron to become Fe3+. Plus. Now, potential of equivalence point is calculated by slightly different equation because we need to take into account that number of electrons in the first reaction and in the second reaction is different. So we need to take weight average, number of electrons for manganese reaction, redox potential of manganese reaction, number of electrons for iron relax, reaction multiply by redox potential of iron reaction and then total of two. So as a result we'll have such simple calculations and redox potential will be shift towards 151 which is redox potential of this first half reaction. So that's where we can stop. Now, we actually do not need to set up um, electrochemical detection because permanganate serves its own indicator in acidic solution. When uh, titration is over, the very first drop of permanganate paints all the solution pink. You can stop. Very easy. Uh, very convenient, no indicator necessary. Uh, this method is used for far more than 100 years for plenty of different iterations. Iron 2 plus, oxalic acid, bromide, hydrogen peroxide, very convenient method in pharmaceutical, and several other compounds. One more possibility of redox titration is titration with potassium dichromate. In this case, the oxidation agent it is Cr2 or 7 2 minus, which reacts with 14 H plus ions, 6 electrons, to make 2 chromium 3 plus ions and water. 
redox potential is a very complex. You need to take into account six electrons and write all the formula here. Now, if we'll do the same calculations as before, we can see that we can stop at any redox potential between 1 and 1.3. In this case, uh, you cannot rely on color of chromate ion. It's very pale yellow, so you need an indicator. A very common indicator is shown here, diphenylbenzidine sulfonate, which is colorless, change color to oxidized form, which is violet. We can select indicator with E0 as close as is possible to potential of equivalence point. There are a bunch of different redox indicators which change their color at different values of redox potential so far. Practically any practically important redox potential you can find suitable indicator. Uh, like in our case it was the Phenylbenzidine sulfonic acid changing color from violet to colorless. Where very common is very inexpensive diphenylamine. Again, violet to colorless, a slightly different redox potential. Other option of uh, indicators is pyridine or phenantrolene complexes of iron changing color at slightly different potential. Again, changes are from purple blue to colorless. In this case, blue to red, which is more convenient, of course. These are just list of, uh, indica of oxidation agents we were using. Potassium permanganate, purple black crystals that dissolve making purple solution. Potassium dichromate, very beautiful orange red crystals, can be grown very big and makes a solution of the same color. Cerium 4 makes hexanitrate complex with ammonia, which again is pale orange making yellow solutions in water. There are two more common oxidation agents. Bromate, potassium bromate and potassium iodate. Both of them are colorless. And in the end we'll discuss solutions of iodine. Iodine is almost black purple solid uh, that poorly dissolves in water making orange brown solutions. So what about bromate? Bromate is very convenient for bromination reactions. From organic chemistry class you may recall that aromatic compounds will easily react with bromine, making bromination at ortho and para position if para is not occupied. So in this case it's stoichiometrically two molecules of bromine are used. A bromine is volatile liquid so it's not very important to not very convenient to titrate with bromine. It's far more convenient to titrate with bromate. Why? Because when you add lots of KBr in your solution and lots of acid, bromate that comes in that solution stoichiometrically makes three bromine molecules. So one ion of bromate, lots of bromide, lots of acid makes 
three molecule of Br2 and water. Now this bromine will instantaneously react with your aromatic compound making brominated species. How can we detect the end of titration? Or potentiometrically or by adding indicator extra bromine molecule will kill the color of usual indicators like methyl orange completely destroy it. That's a very common procedure for pharmaceuticals. 